In the land where impersonating officers is a big no-no, there's still a bunch of folks who can't resist playing dress up with a badge. Some are harmless, just in it for the thrill, while others could cause trouble. But how do the real cops spot these imposters in their midst? Bunnell police responded to a call for service in reference to a man arguing with Wendy's employees. The man was identified as David Stover. This man is trying to get a discount on his fast food order, and he's accused of impersonating a DEA agent. David Stover, 57, was arrested at the Wendy's at 2570 Commerce Parkway following a dispute with the staff members. Belligerent and it's like almost reverse racism. You know, I'm not racist. That's why I said to us, I'm not. I dress like this and work different sides here. Police said they were called to Wendy's because a customer was arguing with the staff. Officers said Stover was demanding a law enforcement discount and started threatening to report staff to corporate for not giving it to him. As you can see, he's talking very calmly for a person who's lying about being an agent. According to police, Stover was a regular at Wendy's for the past two years. Workers said he used to get a discount at the restaurant because he had a friend who was a cashier there. But when that worker left their job, Stover started claiming he was a law enforcement officer. The manager at the store told investigators that Stover would often tell workers he was an undercover DEA agent and would occasionally flash a badge when asked for proof. She said, I can't take a picture of her. I said, I just want to give it to your girlfriend. I want to get you fired. But she was ultimately like yelling at me all the time. She does all the time. Joanna is friends of mine. That's what I'm going to say. I have proof in the pudding. So you're here a lot? Yeah, I live across the street. I live here in the He continues to say to the officer that the staff has been acting differently to him. They do not offer him proper service, like occasionally saying the food is not available, and so he says that they even cuss at him, but he has been trying to be kind. The officer cannot find any evidence to support these claims. So he's placed under arrest. While questioning, he continues to say that it's reverse racism happening there at Wendy's. My badge, what i one girl always says to me, "You always have your badge with you." Blah 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 blah. I said, "It's not a badge, though. It's the right to carry." And she doesn't understand what it means. Now he cooks up the story that he used to work as a cop back in the day, but is not currently an officer. However, the statements of the staff differ. Your badge don't look real because every time he comes, he closes it. He'll show us and he'll close it. Shut it real. So when, he like, come, so when he comes in, he portrays, he says, he, the first yeah, time he, he came said, in. He, he came in like a couple, like last week, and he was like, I'm DEA. And I was like, and he showed me his badge. He shut it real quick. One staff member who previously worked at Burger King said that he never used his police ID back there. He only asked for a discount at Wendy's. Unlike what he said, he is the one who cusses at the staff when they ask for proper ID. Investigators said Stover denied ever claiming to be a DEA agent. However, he did admit to carrying a concealed carry permit badge, which he claimed he showed the employees because they asked to see it. Stover faces a charge of impersonating a law enforcement officer. Next, we have a Roswell man accused of falsely identifying himself as a federal law enforcement agent at an area business. The Chavez County Sheriff's Office arrested Andrew Kriegel, 50, on four counts of impersonating a peace officer, according to documents filed in Chavez County Magistrate Court. You, you represent yourself as a DEA agent, huh? I have no idea. You never went inside that business with the green book? No. Okay. You didn't go in there and tell the lady that you were a DEA agent? No. Okay. On March 1st, 2021 at 107 p.m., police and a sheriff's deputy rushed to the 1200 block of West 2nd Street in Roswell. A worried business owner had called about a strange van. The owner explained that a guy named Kriegel had walked into their shop with two guns on his belt flashed a badge and claimed he was a DEA agent. Approaching the van, the cops found Kriegel inside. Police approached the van and spoke with its occupant, later identified as Kriegel, and took away a pepper ball gun he had on his person at the time. Hello, how are you today? Are you your show? Well, not too bad, I'm just checking my internet. Right. So what's going on? Why are you sitting here? I'm just, I'm checking my internet, I don't have any 
So what's going on, man? I'm just checking the internet. Okay. I live right over here on 101 South Ohio. All right. Down at my sister's house. And, uh, um, I'm just checking my internet real quick. To, I'm looking for a job. And my only contact right now is my uh, uh, email. I still have the internet near my house. Okay. He says that he was checking his internet as he was using his mail. He shows no resistance or anything, and the police start questioning him. I told him what I'm with the DEA. Okay, man. Don't be doing that. You get yourself in trouble, all right? Oh, I forgot yeah. I forgot your name. Andy. Andy. Kriegel. Kriegel. Yeah. Okay, Andy, we're going to go ahead and get out of here, man. Um, after we get out of here, you can grab that. Okay, yeah. All right. When asked about faking identity, he denied having identified himself as a DEA agent or showing the business owner a badge. Kriegel said he had just gone to the business to use their Wi-Fi. After chatting with the business owner, the deputy discovered that the woman who had noticed a van parked near her vehicle at the business, regularly for the past two or three months. She also mentioned seeing footage from a security camera showing the suspect entering the property at different times of the day or night, either in the van or on foot. This March 1st incident wasn't the first time the man had allegedly pretended to be a federal agent. According to court documents, the same owner recalled an incident on February 15th, when Kriegel entered her business with two guns on his belt, displayed a badge, and claimed to be a retired firefighter doing side jobs for the DEA. So I'm just calling to talk to you about that van. Uh, yeah. Um, he advised that he was just sitting there um, to get Wi-Fi. He went into my work last week flashing a badge and um, he had two big guns on him and he was trying to tell me he was the DEA and he was investigating something. Okay, and what exact, what gun did you see? He had two guns on the outsides of his, of his pants. Uh-huh, and what color uh, were they? I don't know, one of them looked like a, a nine and I don't know what the other one looked like I didn't pay attention and he just had this little gold bag and he flipped it and he said I should have came in sooner because he's been sitting out there like at least at least two months and then yesterday he, or last week he finally came in and, and was telling me that he was the DEA okay now this was not the only place he stalked he had gone into other areas claiming he is a DEA. The deputy also learned of another incident that happened the week of February 12th at 900 block of South Sunset Avenue business, where, according to court documents, Kriegel came into that business with a gun on his hip, showed a badge and claimed to be an agent with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. What was your interaction with him that day? My interaction with him is that he was always coming in here. Okay. And he would always stay. But he wouldn't show us the bag. He would just go it at us. How many times did that happen? Well, for me, it did twice. Like two different days? Yeah. Eventually, after many complaints, the police went to his house. You know, ATF don't talk. You know, this, this ain't adding up. He says, I work days. He goes, if you want, call me and I'll, I'll come check him. Okay. And so uh, the first time we tried, he was down in Lake Arthur on a couple calls, so he couldn't come up. And then later that day, I think, um, he came up. And, and the reason being, I had, I had already left, but Carmen said he was back. And this time he came back and he had a couple of crackhead kids with him. Okay. That they were actually sitting at one of the booths in front of the laundry there. And, uh, and that's the first time he's ever brought anybody into the laundry. In his conversation with the deputy, Kriegel did admit to owning a firearm badge and owning a pepper ball gun. With Kriegel's permission, the deputy searched the suspect's apartment, where he found a wallet with a gold Captain Franklin Township badge, a pepper ball handgun, and on Kriegel's blue van, a law enforcement license plate. All of those items were seized by the deputy. Did you pick that before the fire? Here, you know what? You still recording, right? Yes. Let's back back out. Okay. I'm going to turn off my body cam and use my... He was later arrested and charged four counts of impersonating a peace officer. Your chance to tell me what really happened, okay? Crazy. There's cameras in that facility, okay, with audio recording. Okay. Okay. So what, what, tell me the truth. I walked in and told her I was like, she, kept, she asked why I was using the Uh-huh. So I walked in and asked her, I told her... Go ahead for 19. You're what? I, I told her... I was, I, um, was 
Uh, using the internet. Call from yep, this morning. Next set of impersonators tried to rob a pharmacy. Let's see how that turned out. They were a group of not two or three, but four young boys. On July 1st, 2016, around noon, a startling incident unfolded at a pharmacy near the intersection of Greenfield and 11 Mile in Detroit. Four men from the city, clad in DEA shirts and sporting masks, partially concealing their faces, entered the premises with a bold demand. They ordered the pharmacy employees to move to the back of the store while they proceeded to collect various medicines from the shelves. Adding a layer of audacity to the scene, a vehicle with a municipal plate was observed parked outside the pharmacy throughout the ordeal. Police say people in the area thought something was suspicious and called 911, and within three minutes, a slew of officers were on the scene. Police say it does not appear that they had any weapons, but at least one of the alleged DEA impersonators was wearing a bulletproof vest flashed a badge and identified himself as an agent with the United States Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA. Men who are wearing DEA shirts can be seen being cuffed and placed into cop cars. Manhattan U.S. Attorney Preet Bahara said, As alleged, these defendants brought violence and fear into their victims' homes by masquerading as armed law enforcement agents and then robbing the victims. Not only did they steal from the targets of their crimes, they also dishonored the fine men and women who risk their lives every day by enforcing the law and protecting the public. Perez, 45, Rivera, 31, and Disala, 34, all residents of the Bronx, New York, and Ciros, 39, a resident of Queens, New York. Perez, Rivera, and Ciros face a maximum penalty of life in prison and a mandatory minimum penalty of 32 years in prison. Desala faces a maximum penalty of life in prison and a mandatory minimum penalty of seven years in prison. Impersonating or masquerading as an officer is no joke. It's a path fraught with peril. As exemplified by the aforementioned events, the consequences are dire. Have you ever come across such a fraud? Comment down below with your experiences. If you're captivated by these gripping tales, ensure to subscribe for more riveting videos that delve into the consequences of crossing this forbidden path.